All right, it says that we're live. All right, hey, uh, you guys are at Steve Morris Engines. I am Steve. We're gonna do a tour today, and I'm gonna talk to you about, I don't know, a bunch, bunch of stuff and uh, answer some questions if you got it. My son Kyle's on the phone uh, doing the uh, videoing and transferring questions. So why don't you come on in? Take a quick look around up front here. Yeah. Wait for some people this to is, join. Yeah, we can just wait for people to join here. So this is just the entryway and Hall of Fame, Hall of, I don't know what it is. It's Hall of Fame, I suppose you'd say. So we have some, some of the stuff up that we've done um, that we make some plaques for. I had a good customer of mine, uh, Matt Hobbs, make this for me. I'm not even sure why. He just gave it to me. <laughs> And it's, it's he just showed cool. up one day. He just showed up one day. And he says he's got a really cool bear that I really want to get the bear, Matt. Maybe we can get the bear. <laughs> if you're watching. If you're watching. Oh, we want to say, you know, uh, thanks to Engine Builder Magazine and Instagram Takeover. Uh, Engine Builder Magazine is a good magazine, and uh, it's kind of like OG because it's been around forever. And uh, uh, it's got good articles, good tech stuff. And every once in a while, you can see an article in there by me, or something in there, some kind of tech video or something. So come on back here. So just uh, into the office area. Nothing to show in here, really. <laughs> My office, other people's offices. Um, and now we'll just enter into the shop. And here, behold, the shop. Uh, from one end to the other. So uh, this is uh, 15,000 square feet and oh here comes the guard dog this is Dewey he's a he's a jerk <laughs> he, most of the time he's a good dog but he's kind of a jerk get down and in fact he likes to jump and stuff so that's the problem um, but what I'll do here is we'll just start out and I'll start out with a tour of the shop and then we'll probably go back and talk about some of the or excuse me some of the stuff that we got going on here and if we see any questions that pop up uh, we can answer those questions for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, anyways, you enter into here. I think I'll go right straight over here to the left. Uh, Mitch over there knocking engines off stand. Um, wagon shirts. Of course, they up on the website. If you yep. want, yes. SteveMorrisEngines.com. Yes, support the wagon. And uh, anyways, we do uh, the vast majority of all engine assembly stuff is done here. And we do... Uh, we don't really specialize in one specific uh, engine outside of them all being endurance type, um, uh, thousand horsepower and above, and uh, but not. But we'd like to focus on that endurance. We want we're really making things live and last is what we're focusing on, uh, not maximum horsepower to have a short life. There's no use in that. Yeah, so, no, but, no, like stop, bo stock bottom end stuff. We, we do don't not do, do stock bottom no, end stuff. We don't do stuff that style. I do. That is not my deal. If you want to do stock bottom end stuff, you can just do it yourself. That's all cool. Don't care. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, if you want to build something different and bigger, better, better, that's where we come in. So we do everything from. Uh, that's actually a small block Ford single turbo small. Or I'm sorry, twin turbo small block Ford. Yep, it's mine. That's actually Kyle's, yes. His, he is hoarding up <laughs> one whole spot here. It's been there for like two months. But. Yeah, it seems like longer, but okay. Uh, all the way from a common LS deal. And you have to forgive me, some of them I'm not even uh, knowing what we got going on with some stuff. This one actually looks like a... This is a good 2,500 plus horsepower piece for... Yeah, this must be a gas 2,500 horsepower yeah. deal. Yep. <clears throat> good crankshaft and and rods and, and uh, it looks like a billet crankshaft so mm -hmm. um but anyway so we got that then this is a big block chevrolet obviously uh then all the way over here to uh lamborghini engine that uh just got done mocking up for piston valve clearance because we verify that so he's just putting the cylinder head back on and this thing's ready to go on the dyno cart and i'll show you that in just a little bit so we do do these lamborghini programs that's mitch behind you say hi mitch hey He's one of the head guys here. Uh, then we got another LS. And a little crooked. Oh, then we got three LSs. So we got a lot of LSs in the, in, the, in the assembly side of things right now. So this is the main assembly area. It's on head bench right there. Um, 
I don't do, uh, my entire shop is an assembly room. I don't want it dirty. I don't want the floor dirty. I don't want the benches dirty. I don't want anything dirty. So I don't need to have an assembly room that's all separated off like it's rocket science. It's not because obviously, A, we can't fit all the engines in the, in the uh, room and uh, B, it's just kind of a waste of time. So I want to have the entire shop clean. Um, and this is the way it looks all the time. I'm pretty particular about that. Uh, we'll go over here. So this is uh, another Actually, no, Kyle, LS, Kyle's I got working, sitting Kyle's out. working on this thing right now, LS, and it didn't have, we just had to do a quick change over on something here. So that's a um, quick change over, so that's why it's not in the assembly area. It was actually out of the assembly area. Uh, but we can go right here. So these are all engines that are in line right now to dyno. So this is a, a limited hydroplane engine uh, for a... Uh, Shallers, and uh, that's a pretty cool piece. That's an EFI, and we're going to be doing a bunch of testing again with the, uh, some different parts, pieces, and mechanical. It's a straight mechanical system, straight EFI system, and a mechanical system with EFI trim. Then we got the, oh, this is a this is a billet Lamborghini deal. This one actually isn't ready for dyno, obviously. Uh, it's in the wrong area, but uh, this is one of the our billet engines here. Uh, this one here is actually for Houston, uh, Houston Costa at, uh, in Nevada. I'm sorry, I forgot what the name of this company is. It's a exotic rental car place in Nevada. So pretty cool deal. This is not for a Lamborghini. This is for something, another car that he's doing. But he actually had worked with and got involved with Dallas Performance, uh, who we do a lot of the Lamborghini stuff, or all the Lamborghini stuff for is for Dallas Performance. Uh, this is not going in a Lamborghini. This is going in his kit car. That's why. We're working on that separately for Houston. Um, and that, this is just an old customer. This is something I do not normally do. And, uh, but uh, he's been a customer for 20 years or so, back before we opened, or before I opened up this shop. And it's a resto, restoration 396 deal. And I just agreed to do it because he's an old customer. And then he's going to, he's a paint guy. So after we dyno this thing and make sure it's okay, he's going to paint it. But if you, it, this is like uh, tormenting me being unpainted, but it is what it is. Um, then this one is just another Procharge Big Block Chevrolet. Uh, that thing's ready to go back on the dyno and uh, get tuned. That's a blow through carburetor deal. Now we used to do, uh, there is nobody that has done more stuff with blow through carburetors than me. I don't do hardly any of them anymore because the world kind of converts over to EFI, but I still do blow through carburetor stuff and still know what's going on and how to tune and make things work and where the limits are of these things. So everybody that wants to make the 3000 horsepower uh, blow through carburetor because it's cheap, just give up. Give up now because I'm telling you it will not work. You will break more parts than it's ever going to be worth. Blow through carburetors have a really good niche and they work in really good spots. Uh, 3,000 horsepower methanol or even 3,000 horsepower gas stuff is not it. Okay? Right. So, and we got Greg asking, how many engines a year do we build here? Uh, right now, well, that's that's actually a good question because I think last year, uh, Alex would know because uh, I just went over this, but I think I did, I think we did 62 engines complete last year. And as you're going to be able to see here, uh, I think we have 54 or 56 on the floor to do right now so we're uh, just insanely busy but we and you know we do all this other you know all these other things too so i mean there's another small block ford um this obviously is uh one of our smx's this is he came back um so we haven't run this yet this is actually matt hobbs matt that needs to send me the bear the uh, uh this is his engine he brought it back after he put it in mocked up in the car so now we're gonna finish it off, dyno it, we'll put it back in the car, and then you know, keep, continue back on to the process of building uh, a really cool car for uh, Matt Hobbs at Knight's Welding in right. uh, St. Louis. And it's we had place. another guy just chime in, wanted to know if we build JDM, JDM engines like the 2JZ. No, <laughs> we do not. Uh, I just, I don't have the time to, to develop and do all that stuff. I mean, because this, We'll go through probably SMX stuff here a little bit later, but that's 
you know, that is something that is, um, oh, I do have, every once in a while we have some questions. Uh, nobody does this for me. We're not taking anybody's stuff and just changing it slightly. We make all this. This is our billet head, our billet block. This billet head does not fit on anything, nothing. It will not fit on anything you got unless you have this block and vice versa, okay? And I'll explain that some more later, but all the or different bolt, head bolt patterns. So there's nothing that we've just bought and changed. I've heard that every once in a while and it kind of ticks me off. Um, this is our own design. This is fully water jacketed, ProMod motor, same thing that's in Bailey's car that's gone 570s at uh, 260 miles an hour after driving drag week and being the fastest car on drag week, first to ever go fives. Um, that's what, I mean, this is a, just a proven prototype deal. In fact, we did the, uh, the trophy over there. We, for that engine, we won the, you know, the SEMA's Engine Master Award uh, or Masters of Engine Award at SEMA in 2019 for that engine. So this is a complete package that, that's ours, endurance. So, I mean, drives thousands of miles, makes 45, 5,000 horsepower, depends on how hard you really want to lean on. But to go, 60, to go 260 miles an hour, and a 2,850 pound car takes about 4,500 horsepower. Um, here's a regular, now this one is, this has some of our parts on it, but this is a Allen Johnson 481X. All right, this is one that's a pro-charge solid motor. Uh, this is for uh, Richard Forrest. This is one I gotta get on right away here and get it on the dyno and get it all sorted out and uh, finished off. So we just gotta put the EFI on it, injectors, etc and uh, uh, finish building that. Uh, then we got another little uh, LS here. That's right on, this is on the low end of the scale, but I mean, it's all cool. Um, and then as we go through here, it, that's the dyno, stuff that's ready, finished, ready to go on a dyno. Um, you see a little bit of stuff over here. Um, that's like a shelving stuff, just things are waiting to get picked up or shipped out. But all of this stuff in through here is all customer jobs in process. So we got a big block four here. We got a SMX right here. Uh, we got a uh, another big block Ford right here. This is another SMX. Now this this SMX is um, this is Alan Whitaker's. Another real good uh, guy, good customer of ours and. He's got the, the engine there for mock-up, so that's why the, half the shelf is all empty because he's got the mock-up pieces for it. Um, this is a bunch of carts and uh, parts in a cart uh, that is for this uh, four nine bore space Hemi that I got over here. We'll show you that later, and I'm moving all this stuff over to the assembly area. Uh, started moving it over there yesterday, and uh, just starting to work on uh, doing the assembly on that because I need to have that assembled this week and. Uh, be doing, like I said, I'll be working through that in my little area and uh, need to have it on Dino Friday is my goal. Uh, this is actually an interesting deal. This is a all aluminum camera motor, a Ford overhead cam a V8. Uh, you got to be pretty old school to know what a camera motor is. If you don't know what a camera motor is, look it up. It's pretty interesting. Um, Another Lamborghini deal. Now this, this is Dallas Performance's uh, dyno cart. So what it did was we I gave them all the specs and everything to build their own cart that we always have this intercooled twin turbo, all the hot side, cold side, to just continue to plug engines into it and then test the engine. So that's where that engine's gonna go over there that Mitch is working on right now. Um, today I think he'll we'll probably get around to put it on the dyno today and he's going to uh, uh, get it on dyno and then as soon as we get the injectors and stuff from Dallas we'll dyno this motor so we'd like to prove them all out dyno them before we send them back to Dallas is, is the goal on everything right. Greg asks uh, when it comes to parts do you let people bring you parts or do you design the build entirely um, as long as the parts, I don't care if, if you can bring parts into us, if, if you have something that is perfectly good that we would normally work with, no problem. If you got a POS that you want us to use in your nice motor, I won't do it. So, but in general, yes, we, I, I really don't care, um, to a certain extent. 
uh, as soon as people start trying to nickel and dime me to death because they want to save five dollars, um, I got we we got to make money somehow, and we do make money on parts, and that's kind of part of the whole build. But in general, if you have, for example, if you have a block, if you have a crank, you have some big part here or there that you already have, and you want to finish the build, no problem, we'll do that. Okay. Um, then you got to. Another LS, uh, another big block Chevrolet, another small block Chevrolet, uh, another big block Chevrolet. Oh, this is a this is now this is one interesting thing that we are working on right now. And now that I have a, a, a another guy that's helping us out that I hired that is uh, working for us full time that's doing CAD, CAM, and uh, going to help us with all our billet stuff. This is for uh, Dodger. This is for Darren Nepper. Darren Nepper. And uh, this is Barra. Barra engine. So this is a Barra V6. This is the torque plate for it. And so what we're doing is uh, Darren wants to build a 2,000 plus horsepower Barra turbo deal. And so we're designing a uh, one piece billet main cap for it, sleeving it, uh, you know, doing a full port on the cylinder head, working through all of that to build something really cool. Uh, for Darren, so he now he did bring us a bunch of parts because I don't sell bare parts, so uh, you know, he brought like a billet crankshaft and uh, a bunch of parts here pumps. Uh, I think I'm supplying a piston, I think he got a rod in here. In fact, I gotta go back through here and look at all everything that's here. So, um, another Lamborghini, another small block, small block, big block. LS, uh, big block, big block, <laughs> LS, big block, yada, 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 all the way down. Oh, there's a little Gen 3 Hemi stuff down there too. Um, so now we'll go over here. Um, so that's like, this is all just, this is customer stuff in process right this moment. Customer engines uh, being either assembled over there or all assembled waiting for dyno. Uh, I dyno, Kyle dynos now, and we'll tune stuff. Uh, we're the only two that are doing it right now. So now you would go over to my little assembly area where I'm working on some custom stuff. And I got some really cool stuff in here. Uh, this is that 4.9 Hemi for uh, Vito Montesano, Mont Montesano in Can uh, Canada. So this is the one I got to be done with Friday here. Um, so I'm getting everything laid out as soon as I can get Clark's intake manifold off of my bench. So this is Clark. He's got one of our SMX engines and we're converting this over from gas to methanol. So we're doing injectors and uh, so I'm just putting everything all together for him so he can just put it back on the car. Um, then we have, uh, we'll go over here to the SML. So I just did a video on SML. Uh, if you guys have not seen that, go to our Facebook or go to our YouTube channel and you're gonna um i'm talking about this because this is i think this is going to be super cool uh like i said the based off of the smx and everything we learned from there so this is all billet ls fully water jacketed for endurance and this thing is going to be 3,000 horsepower plus so 30,000 to 3,500 horsepower and live because i actually took the time Again, I, as soon as I put this out there, I put a video out there explaining that we have an altered head bolt pattern and that only my cylinder head that we're working on, only my cylinder head, all billet water jacketed cylinder head, fits on my all billet water jacketed block. So what's the first thing people ask me? How much is the block? You can't buy the block because it doesn't. it's a complete package. Uh, there is nothing out there that fits this because this is a six head bolt per cylinder six head bolt six half inch head bolts per cylinder Symmetrical pattern. So each one is equally spaced here. This one's a little bit farther But instead of just everybody leaving the conventional four bolt and then just throwing some stupid little bolt here Stupid little bolt here. Well, they always blow in between because the bolt spacing is too far apart so we've moved everything into a symmetrical pattern, moved the inside head bolts in, these are in, and then added these half inch head studs out here. So this is six half inch head studs on an LS. Gonna eliminate a lot of problems. Plus you have everything here is a minimum of three quarters of an inch thick. 
anywhere in the cylinder bore, anywhere in this block, everything is a minimum of three quarters of an inch thick in any critical mass area. All right. If you want to see more about this, you can go to our Facebook or YouTube. Got some more on this, and we'll be covering more of this as we're building it out. Because right now we're proofing it. So this is the first one. I just got this, and so I have to actually proof this out. Um, so I'm gonna start fitting everything from the sleeves. We got an hour. It says we can go as long as we want. The, uh, we got sleeves, the whole deal that I need to fit, make sure it works, make sure I don't need to make any alterations on the next uh, next two blocks, and then we got more blocks after that, and I'll show you the material and everything we got stored up for that stuff. Um, oh, Ben, I think you'll like this. Well, this is this is the transmission, broke, or was broken transmission out of my wagon. I'll show you the wagon here in a little bit. Um, but I thought, you know what, what a golden opportunity if to to help people in their sheer ignorance. Because I get really tired of V16 comments that the V16 is just welded together LS. That is a entirely ignorant comment. Uh, ignorant and lazy comment. When there's so much information out there, just people would look. So I thought, you know what, I'll just grab these down because I have spares. I don't have the engine here. Uh, the guys in uh, Dubai have the engine in the car. I'm not exactly sure what's all going on with it, but we built that. If you want to look it up, there's good information on it and there's bad. The bad information is retards that are out there saying that we just welded engine together. That's wrong. There's good information out there that shows a bunch about it, but this is the one piece billet crank or camshaft. All right. Now you notice this whole width section here in the middle. All right. This is one piece billet crankshaft. One piece, not some welded together POS. This is one piece billet crankshaft. This happens to be one of my spare crankshafts for it. All right. And you stand these up on end, they're kind of cool. Look at that guy. Pretty cool. But the width here in the section is because you need to have a thrust bearing in it. Where do you want to put the thrust bearing? Okay, we need it. You're gonna put the thrust bearing all the way back here. It's not logical. You're gonna put it here. It's not logical. You're gonna put it here. Maybe, maybe, perfect spot. Maybe, maybe, no. So we need the width for that because I'm not about reinventing the wheel. I'm about trying to make it better. And so one of the things that we did do with this is we added section in the middle so we could widen that out in order to put a proper thrust bearing in it and a thrust bearing that was readily easy to get. So this billet, uh, all billet uh, B16 that we did, that made 5,000 horsepower, uses a big block Chevrolet main bearing. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel and have some bearing company make us bearings. I mean, I'll build stuff around to reuse and use a, uh, a existing part. Right. So we got a question here too. Would you build another V16? If you have enough money, yes. I'm just waiting. So I'm contracted to be the one that's supposed to be building those for the production cars. Devel 16. For the Devel 16. Uh, they just haven't gotten around to it yet. But we'll see. I would uh, I would do it. That's obviously that's not a problem. But I mean, it is so costly. You just it is not a hundred thousand dollar deal. When when this engine right here. So this thing complete, uh, this is a hundred twenty thousand dollar deal, and I could, you know, I can call up noon and I could buy uh, two or three, four or five, ten of these, basically tomorrow. Uh, it's all engineered out. It's all in production. It's something you can do. Even my SMX is a hundred twenty, hundred thirty thousand dollars, fully dressed. That's EFI turbos, you know, the whole deal. So obviously, a one-off V16 that is a real deal, not welded together. Not a welded together V12, not a welded together V6, not welded together at all is uh, five, six, seven times more than what these are. It's just as a matter of cost. So let me put this crankshaft down before it falls. Oh, I thought that was just kind of a, that's an interesting thing because that is one of the comments every once in a while that pops back up where people are talking about the V16 and it's like, the, the, uh, the ignorance just pops out in people and all they want to do is just slam it because they don't bother to learn about it. So, anyways, um, let's go over here. 
So now we can go over to the dyno rooms. Customer stuff. Customer stuff and assembly. And then this is dyno room number one. So in, in this dyno room, uh, we do, uh, typically I do, we'll do 3,000 to 3,500 horsepower type stuff in this dyno room. Um, because uh, if it's blue, we made it. The only thing we don't make for this stuff is uh, electronics. And, um, but we're actually uh, making absorber parts, uh, drive shaft parts, uh, because after getting pretty tired of breaking U-joint type drive shafts, um, not in this room, but I think in the other room, I broke one of the drive shafts and in one of my previous shops, working for uh, uh, Kyle Kirker at New Era Racecraft, we uh, um, broke a drive shaft and broke a U-joint and sent the drive shaft and U-joint through the truss and through the roof. Uh, scary deal when that all happens. So I make, I make the drive here, I make the drive internally into the absorber, and uh, like I said, we make everything here except the uh, that, that actually needs to, we're probably actually going to need to rebuild this absorber because I can feel the bearings getting bad in it. So I rebuild the absorbers. I go through the whole thing, I mean, do all this stuff and, and design it to, to fit what we want. So this gets us over to dining room number two. So this is dining room number two. Um, this uh, room is a... Uh, so I made all the carts, so all the carts would interchange. So we have dyno, four dyno carts here that interchange in any dyno room that we want. The drive is a little bit different on this. Uh, this has got a big 10 spline drive instead of the 40 spline strange axle drive. Um, but this, <coughs> excuse me, this absorber is uh, more modified and this is the one that we've had 5,000 horsepower on. So you can see, we have a lot of water going into this. Uh, if you wanted to see uh, my dyno video, I talk about how we do the dynos and how dynos actually function to work, and that's on Engine Builder Magazine. You'd have to scroll back a little bit. Um, and over on my YouTube, so one or the other. Uh, so this is dyno room number two, and we do a little bit bigger stuff over here. Uh, both dynos have the same uh, control software, the same uh, data acquisition software, because uh, I just uh, I used to have two different softwares on each one and sometimes it's just a little hard going back and forth between uh, different software programs and a lot of times uh, I don't have anything on the dyno right now that stuff's all lined up to get on the dyno so uh, we're gonna have to uh, a lot of times I'll have two of dynos going on at the exact same time I'll like run over there run something and then I'll run back over here but now that Kyle's give me uh, more help on uh, some of the engines it's getting a little bit easier to do that. So let's go back into the main portion of the shop. Oh, I guess we can go over here too. So this, this room here, um, this is the uh, cam doctor and valve spring room. So we test and run all the valve springs uh, all the way down the coil bind height and get all data off of the valve spring that we need for the engine build. So we do that on all engine builds and provide that with the, with the engine build, or we keep the paperwork sometimes ourselves, but we have that information. And then we use Cam Doctor if we're trying to figure out what somebody has. If somebody sends us an engine, and this is something different that we do, so we don't just build brand new engines from scratch. We will build or convert your engine if it fits in what we want to do. Um, so if somebody sends us something then we want to figure out what kind of camshaft they got, what the profiles are on it, we'll go through there and run the cam doctor and check it out and see what it is. And then, like I said, on the springs, uh, I have videos on this too. So if you ever want to see a tech video on how cam doctor works, how the springs work, uh, spring retainer keepers, rockers, uh, we have videos on that on Engine Builder Magazine also. And then, uh, this is where I keep a lot of the SMX and SML stuff. So the SMX is the big motor. The SML is my LS-based SMX, per se. Um, so you can see here, uh, I got three crankshafts for the SML stuff. 
pistons, rods, uh, but I'm mostly stocked up on uh, SMX stuff. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I got seven, seven uh, billet Bryant crankshafts in stock. I got connecting rods in stock. I have pistons in stock. I got springs, head studs, uh, camshafts, sleeves, valves, retainers, keepers, uh, a lot of stuff. So a lot, a lot of stuff. Uh, these are some spare spare heads. Actually, they're sample junk heads. So we're gonna start machining on those uh, because we're machining all this stuff in house, and that's all brand new. So we'll go over there, look at that. Um, then we got uh, more customer stuff up on the shelf. Most of that stuff is a little longer term, and it's just waiting for something. Um, we do a little bit of fabrication and the only thing I even have any kind of fabrication equipment for is uh, uh, just to do our own stuff. So we're like, um, it, it, it's one of the reasons why it takes so long to do like a, a, a twin turbo intercooled engine dyno is hard to do because uh, wherever the turbos are mounted, I mean, we're building tubing and we're doing hot side, cold side, just to test your engine. And that's why it's more expensive too. Uh, a lot of places won't test your engine. Maybe they'll just test your engine NA, but we will test your engine fully dressed, uh, operating the way it's gonna be in the car. And if you have all the stuff out of your car, we'll use the stuff out of your car, as long as it fits the dyno. So we're always having to build some stuff and do some things like that. Um, that's my older son, Tyler's truck. Um, he's walking over there right now. Uh, he's working on that for a cool street rod. Somebody um, just asked a pretty good question. Are you experiencing chain supply problems? Yes. Supply chain problems. So Alex has been, Alex works here and uh, he's always on me about, I need to do a video on the supply chain problems. Yes, it is really hard to get parts. Um, we can probably start making parts faster than we can start getting parts. So because of that, we are really pulling back on selling parts because A, we can't get them, and B, when I can get them, I really kind of need to use them for my engine customers. So uh, I have, for example, crankshafts. I got, you know, I got all those Billet Bryant crankshafts. I have other crankshafts too. Uh, big block Chevrolets, I have blocks. Uh, I have some LS blocks. I have some big block Chevrolet blocks, uh, crankshafts. Uh, I have some cylinder heads. I mean, so I have a lot of, uh, good stuff I won't sell them to people uh, because I need to sell them as part of my engines for my engine customers so uh, we're really really cutting back on part sales and taking a lot of stuff off the website because we just can't get it and uh, not sure where that's all going right now uh, can't can't live like this forever but we'll see um, then you got uh, so this is a little bit of fab area. Then we got the hub dyno. So uh, we just posted up a hub dyno video from uh, this weekend. Uh, just a two, uh, it, we, it was, uh, we only spun it up to 2,000 horsepower at the hub. Uh, and that was, it was actually a pretty nice uh, setup. It was one of my SMX deals, obviously, in uh, Rocky Bowler's car. And we're, we're, trying, we're not trying to uh, set dyno records. I really don't care about that anymore. And uh, so I just wanted to make sure the base tune is right. So we tuned it from, uh, you know, 10 PSI, 15 PSI, 20 PSI. That gives me a linear or, or you know, a scale of what things are going to be afterwards. And uh, that's, that's plenty good, at, at, especially at 2,000 horsepower at the wheel there, or the hub, uh, to go as fast as you wanted to go, which is sixes in that car. And then we can sort everything out at the track because you're always still going to sort the final stuff out at the track. Uh, I cannot simulate everything that you can that's going on at the track but we can come pretty close and we can get nice good safe base tunes which is what we did so uh hub dyno and then we'll uh why don't we go yeah let's go through the rest of the equipment here first um we just have a head shop uh this these are uh two pairs of smx heads they were doing a valve guide upgrade into and uh because uh, the valve guides that were in them uh, on the exhaust uh, were non, they weren't good. 
they were the common drag race valve guide but uh, when you have a valve guide let me see here that here it is that <coughs> this valve guide is a is the valve guide that's in the exhaust well this is all captured right here this is this part right here is up in the cylinder head uh, spring is right here okay this is in the cylinder head about one inch and then this is all sticking into the port okay now you need this sticking in the port because it supports the valve keeps the valve from wag wagging around all right the problem is is it's sticking too far into the port and it's too hot the turbo cars just don't tolerate this because drive temperatures going down the road for eight ten hours straight you know just stopping for fuel is uh and just idling and all the you know just pulling trailers like what we do on baileys or just driving is really hard on this and what we found was that it will uh even though this is a bronze liner steel guide bronze liner it would when we shut the engine down this was so hot it would shrink grab the valve and when we restarted it it would hang the valve open very momentarily and then pull a part of the bronze guide out of it so then it was just stuck or there it, 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 with half the bronze guide out of it on the inside the liner and then it would allow stuff to move around too much along with getting it caught so what i did was i came up with this deal uh, like i said th there's got to be a better way of doing this so you can see here i shortened it up because it doesn't do any good if this is if this is all broke out and isn't doing it isn't holding the valve tight anyways then why have it there it's doing nothing except absorbing heat so I shortened up the guide and I put it into a three quarter inch diameter, full steel. So this is uh shoot, forgot what grade steel this is. It's a, yeah, anyways, it's a steel Molly steel. Uh, and then put a full bronze liner in it with a, a nail head type top that the spring actually rides on. So the spring comes up here, holds it down. So that this whole area heat sinks, goes into the cylinder head, heat sinks that up. It's located held down and uh, we just ran these on sick week and uh, Clark made it all the way through sick week I made it all the way through sick week with no valve train issues nothing happening I uh, checked out Clark's cylinder head on his SMX with the new valve guide deal and uh, was perfect I mean these things had zero to minimal wear and so I was really super happy with that but that's a little stuff that I do and uh, so what I also do is I came up with something or we came up with something better and I decided to, hey, we just need to just make this happen for everybody. So I've had everybody send their cylinder heads or bring their engine back and I put these in for free. So this is just upgrade. We learned that this, this works great at the racetrack, does not work on the street. Uh, and that's not the way I sell them. So we had this upgrade, and so I upgraded everybody into this. Uh, in fact, Rocky, um, Rocky Boulder brought his car here, and we dyno it this week. We actually pulled the cylinder heads off at first because it was a brand new build. Put new guides in it, and then uh, then dynoed it all for nothing. So, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that we try to do here. I try to make this stuff always the best for people. And if I come up with something, think of something that maybe we missed, wasn't quite as good, have something that's better, you know, we, we make that happen for everybody. What was the weird sound on the phone there? Oh, somebody joining. It, oh, never mind. All right. So, uh, Val Granger's a head shop, uh, rod home. Obviously, don't do a whole bunch on this except just uh, miscellaneous stuff. Uh, lathe work. Uh, most everything that I have here in the shop that we use. Uh, is because we just need to need to have it. Uh, balancer, um, any of the CNC equipment we originally got because <clears throat> I couldn't get people to make stuff in time, and it is horrendously bad. You ask about supply chain problems. I mean, wait until you're trying to get. Uh, you know, you, we design up these SMX heads and these custom parts the SMX block. That's all my design. The cylinder heads are my design. Everything's there, but we got to rely on some other people to make that stuff. And it is hard. And uh, you will wait a long time. Uh, yep, everybody knows somebody that can do something, but when push comes to shove and getting things really done and produced, that's a different story. So, 
equipment laid. We have three CNC machines over here that we do uh, just brackets, valve covers, and stuff like that. The crankshaft balancer. Um, this is the the old block machine. So this is a that's a nice little four axis machine. You know, bores, decks, those lifter bushings, that kind of stuff. Um, it, wor it works well. Um, not the fastest machine in the world, um, but the new machine that we're super happy about <coughs> and working with now is this monstrosity, which kind of cracks me up because, you know, you can get in here and this is fairly bad boy. I mean, it's super cool. So... We're able to do uh, block work, uh, conventional block work in this machine, and it is super fast. This thing, we bored, this will bore 30,000. Bore this V8 block out, so this is a small block Chevy. It'll bore this block in 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, it'll bore all, all the bores. And then we can do uh, bore it, deck it, receiver groove it, and do lifter bushings in one day which is like phenomenal. I mean, that's just super fast. But the primary thing that this is here for, that this entire machine is here for, is so we're doing five axis, our billet heads for the SML and for the SMX. So if you want to look at this, so these are the first set of heads that we're working on for the SMX. So these are roughed in, you see there, SMX. These are roughed in everything that we can do in four axis. And now we're do writing programming and doing everything to make uh, all the ports, uh, do the valve angles, valve guides and seats. So that's the roughed in head. Those are finished heads over there. So we're now finished, you know, now making these entirely in house and working on the SML head uh, for that SML block uh, for the billet water jacketed uh, LS based engine. So we're, working through that and hope to show you a bunch of videos and a bunch of really cool stuff with the SML. Um, then we have a cylinder hone, a line hone. There's also a line bore machine over here. A uh, little line bore machine right there to do uh, main cast, do cam tunnels, stuff like that on. Uh, Bridgeport, obviously. Uh, dog treats to keep the dog under control all that cool stuff and we do uh that's the cat cad room in there so we do all the cad and all that kind of crud. then we can come over here and we'll go over uh oh this is actually this is other stuff here too so this is a broken ls block for tom hammonds uh this is a broken the Viper V10 block that we ended up doing a bunch of prototype work on and developing a great big deck plate, deck plate cylinder sleeve assembly to keep things more alive. So this is all just kind of uh, cut up uh, to do that. Uh, these are a couple blocks I just have in stock. And uh, then I think we'll just talk about the, the wagon. So you can, but you can see from over here, I mean, uh, I try to keep everything super clean. I make all the guys uh, be clean about stuff. Uh, but we got a lot of stuff going on right now. A lot of stuff going on right now. But we can go over here and talk about the world's coolest wagon. Uh, remember to buy a shirt. So I'm hoping to see shirt sales go up. Because I got to pay for that transmission. Anyways, uh, super cool wagon. So I've had this car for uh, over 20 years now. And uh, Kyle, uh, that's videoing right now, would have actually ridden in the back seat, the rumble seat that faced backwards in this car when we first got it. So, and I just like the car. I think they're always cool. And uh, you can see here, it is a it is a full pro modified car. Uh, this is 25.3, so it has a this has a six O cert on it. Uh, you can see we're missing the transmission right now. And you can see everything from uh, carbon fiber interior, the two seats, the uh, radio headset, even cup holders. 
because we just got done driving this car. Uh, I think man, pretty close to that. How far was it? 800, 900 miles? Yeah, something, something like that. Something like that. And uh, had it not been for a broken transmission, I think we would have made it into the 650s. Uh, but first time out, I mean, uh, we had this car uh, on the hub dyno over there. I started it up. Uh, sorted out some stuff, tested it, made sure it came up on the trans brake, made sure it was uh, controlling boost, made a couple hits, made 1600 horsepower is off because I wasn't leaning on it. Said that's good enough, close enough, let's go. We got to go right now. Put it in the car on, or put it in the trailer on Friday and showed up at the Bradington on Saturday and started making passes on uh, Sunday or whatever it was. Yeah, something like that. Engine Militia wants to know how many employees do we have here? Seven. So. Uh, Kyle's on the phone. This is lunchtime, so obviously most people have already split for lunch and didn't want to be on camera. Uh, so I have uh, uh, Kyle, my youngest son, Tyler, my oldest son, and then uh, Brock just started yesterday. And then we have uh, Caleb, who, uh, who actually quit, but he's still here uh, helping us out until he's got to go to his new job, which is fine. And then Alex, Mitchell. Uh, which is uh, M1 that you already met. We call him M1 because uh, his name is Mitch, and we have another Mitch that we call M2. Uh, M2 must be at lunch somewhere. So uh, that's, uh, yeah, yeah, cover me. Oh, and then a secretary up front for Sue. And then Alex. So Alex has most of the phone calls and stuff. Um, and Dewey, who really doesn't do much of anything except bug people. He looks all innocent right there, but yeah. Uh, SMX, and we, I have a bunch of videos on this from us being at the racetrack at the sick week. So that was our initial showing. This one is 572 cubic inch, and uh, like I said, we went uh, super happy. We went 680s at 215 mile an hour, basically off the trailer with this car. And had we not broken the transmission, I think we would have made it into the 650s because I'm really not leaning on it, really not. Uh, pushing it real hard at all yet and uh but super happy with the way it's all turned out it's steel all steel all stock body uh except obviously for the hood and super cool roof rack up there uh kyle hates that roof rack with a passion but uh I'm working on how to get it off and on of there uh something interesting to note is that uh so uh when i ran the when i ran the car we had to go through the scale, and it weighs 3575. Okay, so 3575 is what the car weighs. It goes 680. <clears throat> the uh, uh, we loaded it all up, put the roof rack on it, and loaded everything up. All our tools, spare tires, there's a bunch of videos, a bunch of pictures out there all over the internet on it. And when we drove out of the track, they had the scale open and nobody was on it. I go, sweet, let's go over on the scale and see how much it weighs now. It weighed uh, 4750. So the roof rack and all the crap on top of this car was 1,200 pounds. So, I mean, we carry the generator, tools, spare parts, uh, let's see, two, three, four, uh, and tires, I mean, pro jacks. We have the pro jacks on top of the car. A lot of really cool stuff. So uh, super happy with this whole deal, being the shop car, and it's pretty gal darn neat. And I think we're going to be driving it more. I'll probably end up letting uh, Kyle drive it some this year as he's working on his car and, and uh, drive something super cool like this. Um, then, as uh, as I forgot about this too, so Kyle was leaning on it. This is all raw material. The cylinder heads, blocks, more blocks, more cylinder heads. I mean, this probably... We, I, I ended up buying material right now because it, it just was crazy um, how much it's going up. So there's probably, uh, I don't know, $50,000 or something of material right there uh, just for building up in the future. Uh, so these will be SMX blocks uh, and SML blocks. And this one is, this one's SMX heads and this palette is SML heads. So... Hopefully we'll be making a lot of chips and uh, getting going on that. So, um, questions? Do they have any more questions? So yeah, we're through the shop here. What school or place would you recommend for someone to get into machining? Ah, uh, yes. I 
I get this question all the time. People send me emails asking me how to get started, where to go, what to do. Um, there's some decent schools out there that can that can get you uh, maybe a, a little in the door. But what I'm looking for uh, is I just need somebody that's an enthusiast, that's a hard worker, that's willing to start at the bottom. So everybody I have here in the shop, except the, the new guy that I just hired, Brock, is uh, and he started from nothing too. Uh, with everybody here, it started with no training. Now the fans are not on the CNC machine, so it keeps the uh, uh, keeps the it, coolant. Yeah, it keeps the temperature the coolant, down. That's the coolant anyways, yeah, anyways. So that's yeah, Kyle's rushing me through this thing. Now. We gotta start wrapping it he's up. He's hangry. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, oh, what was I saying? Uh, so what I'm looking for is that you just need somebody to start up from the bottom, and that's where everybody has. So like M1 uh, started with me after high school. Uh, I've had a couple other people that started with me at high school, and they've moved on. Um, Ryan Whitty, uh, who's one of the main Holly guys and the main tech guys. In fact, he's the one that does all the tech videos for Holly. He started with me and uh, started with me right out from nothing and uh, moved on over to Holly, and, uh, so been, which is all cool. I uh, had another guy, Dylan, that did the same thing, you know, moved out, moved on, uh, but started here, you know, from basically nothing. And so I would always encourage people, just go offer, you know, sweep the floor, just be willing to go in the bottom. You're not, uh, you're not going to go in and be an engine assembler right now. You're not going to go in and design stuff. You're not going to go in and do those kind of things. It takes a long time to do that. Um, I went through, when I went through school, uh, I went through a little trade school called, uh, well, not a little trade school, but uh, Ferris State University. They used to have an engine program there. I went through there, and uh, it was a good experience, and it probably helped me get in the door. But don't expect much after you get in the door. You need to prove yourself. You need to work your way up and uh, make it all happen for yourself by hard work. Listen, learn. Uh, do all that kind of stuff like that. Um, any other questions? Yes. Greg would like to know, besides architecture, what are the differences between the SMX and the SML engines? And he wants he wants to know that in terms of use. So why would you choose one over the other? Uh, okay. So we did the SML engine. Uh, if you watch the video on that, I did, did the SML engine because I had a customer call up and say, hey, there is, I would love to get your SMX. This is Drew McReady. And he goes, I would love to get your SMX engine, but if I show up to that, to any grudge race with that engine in the car, nobody's going to race me. Can you build an LS-based engine exactly like your SMX, but downscaled into something smaller? And i.e. also, you know, less horsepower. You're not going to make 4,500 or 5,000 horsepower on an SML. Uh, there's a bunch of limiting factors that are there, but most of it is. Uh, cylinder bore, crankshaft, there's, there's not enough beef there to make that work. But, um, so I said, yeah, yeah, cool, let me think about it. And I and, uh, thought about it and said, okay, I think we can do that. So we started that whole process last year of development and uh, working on the design, working on how what things need to change, how we can water jacket stuff, how we can keep strength, how we can add strength, how we can add head bolts, etc. cetera. Um, so if you're looking at the you know, that smaller LS style engine platform, which that, it, that SML is a direct drop in to any LS. So the, the hot side flanges, so the exhaust flanges are in the same spot, same height, same size. So your headers are gonna work for the typical aftermarket LS head. Uh, hot side and cold side will work and just fit directly in the car. So that's a direct drop in. Uh, and believe it or not, the uh, SMX engine actually started out as a joke uh, between me and Tom Bailey. And I'll walk up here and I'll show you because it's kind of interesting. We said, boy, we, because we were building, uh, I was building, you know, these custom one-off big block Chevrolets trying to make all this horsepower. <clears throat> the problem is, is uh, custom one-off stuff. And, and that's pr our primary deal here is the SML is not one-off stuff. Anybody can build one-off deals. We're building something that we have parts in stock for. You have a problem, we got parts for it. You break a block, we get, 
which is really, really hard to do, but you blow something up and it's damaged, we'll have a block. If you need a head, we got a head, we're gonna have heads. On the SMX stuff, we have blocks, we have heads um, in process right now, uh, have crankshafts, I have all the parts for these things, so it's not a one-off deal, but it makes huge horsepower in the drag and drive application or any kind of endurance application. But back to what the story was, was this engine right here, this is a solid 481X. There is no water in this motor. But as a joke, as a joke, I welded on these water fittings because this used to belong to Tom Bailey. This was a backup motor that we were always going to put in, in a 2.0. Never did, but we had this as a backup motor. So, you know, we're going to do that someday. And then we were just joking together. It's like, hey, we should, we should do a, a water jacketed 481X. That would be cool if you could make that happen. I said, oh, let me think about that. And I said, hey, this will be neat. And we actually welded on a fitting, and I actually engraved this into the cylinder head, but this is solid. There is no water in this motor. But this is the, uh, um, the first joke. We were going to show up with this and hook up water lines into it at just a regular drag race and say, oh, yeah, we can have a, uh, Steve built a water jacketed 481X. Well, after thinking about it, thinking about it, I decided to just do it and said, I think we can make this happen. And so uh, got some help on CAD side of things. I knew what I wanted, knew how things needed to be or what I thought needed, things needed to be. And uh, we made this all happen with a water jacketed uh, SMX engine. But it was all, it all came about because of a joke. We were going to just make, you know, people think. And then actually we still do make people think. So any other questions? No, I think we'll start uh, waiting up. and... All right. A quick view. I will tell you one one more thing and let you go. So this is uh, because it kind of goes back to you know how do you get started in this business? How do you do things, etc. Um, so it was uh, in 2010. So long story. Had my clock cleaned by a partner. Blah blah blah. But in 2010, I decided I want to get back out and I want to do this on my own. I don't want any help. I don't want any partner. I don't want anything from anybody anywhere, period, nothing. So in 2010, I had 600 bucks in my pocket, and it was literally 600 bucks, and I had a 20-foot by 20-foot garage. And I started Steve Morris Engines in 2010 in that 20-foot by 20-foot garage and 600 bucks. Tom Bailey was the first person that dropped the motor off to my shop, to that little 20 foot by 20 foot garage behind my house. And just by uh, doing good business principles, doing things the way things should be done and having good customer service, I really focus on that, taking care of problems, taking care of issues, um, treating people right, treating people fair, uh, but charging what needs to be charged turned it, everything into this, you know, so thankful for all that, and family helps, you know, and I always had, you know, uh, people, uh, little people here and there, but I never borrowed any money from anybody, uh, never did anything except what I thought needed to happen and how it needed to happen, so that is the way you really need to do business, and uh, so if you're thinking about trying to start something like this, or thinking about getting into the business, just always kind of remember that, you're going to have to work hard, get through it. Or you need to have a dad with a lot of money because it takes astronomical amounts of money to get to this spot. So anyways, uh, I think that's it. Oh, and uh, people love it when I say anyways because uh, I got one friend that makes a drinking game out of every time I say anyways. So anyways, uh, I'm Steve Morris, Steve Morris Engines. Uh, buy a wagon t-shirt, support engine builder mag, support Steve Morris Engines. Support your local engine builder if he's not a tool.